Okay, Alexander, let's talk about the, uh, the lira, the Turkish economy, and uh, things are looking bad, really bad. Um, what's going on here? Because we've, we've done videos in the past about the, uh, the situation in Turkey with regards to the lira and the collapse of the lira and the Turkish economy, but um, it's gone from bad to worse. What do you make of the situation? It goes from bad to worse because you have a president, President Erdogan, who um, believes in growth at all costs. He's not worried about inflation. He's not worried about uh, Turkey's deteriorating foreign trade position, the fact that Turkey's running ever bigger trade and budget deficits. He's not worried about the fact that the country's falling into ever deeper insolvency. And he's not worried about the fact that, uh, um, you know, people's living standards in a, on a day to day basis are actually falling because what he is obsessed by and mesmerized by are GDP figures. And what has happened until fairly recently and to some extent continues to happen is that he's been able to get support at critical moments from various governments, from China, from the uh, uh, from Qatar who have bailed him out when he gets into trouble. And so he is encouraged to pursue his growth at all costs policy, which amounts essentially to keeping interest rates as low as possible, even as inflation rips. And what, has, what that has done is that it's left Turkey with now a major structural inflation crisis it's just managing so far to avoid getting into a, a hyperinflation situation, but it's not impossible. We could eventually find ourselves there. It's got these huge deficits, both in its terms of its trade and its uh, uh, balance of payments and its uh, budget position. And it's run, down, it's run out of financial reserves because it, it uses all the money it has to try and support the Turkish currency, the lira, even as uh, the lira is not, no longer supported by conventional economic and monetary policies. Now, Erdogan has been able to keep this going, as I said, for a long time because he's had support from key outside powers. One gets the sense that that support is beginning to run thin. Um, the result was that a short time ago, he appointed a new head of the Turkish Central Bank, Naci Akbal. Akbal tried to restore some kind of monetary sense to the state of things in Turkey. He put up interest rates recently to very high levels to try and bring inflation down and to stabilise the lira. But of course, Erdogan didn't like that. He immediately sacked Akbal. Nobody any longer, therefore, believes that either the lira or the domestic economy will receive the support they require from the higher interest rates they urgently need. Everybody expects inflation to rise even further. And of course, the lira is crashing and taking down Turkish living standards with it. This has been the constant pattern of Erdogan's economic policies. Um, if you uh, pursue a policy of um, growth at all costs, you will get an unbalanced economy, which is ultimately an unsustainable one. Now, the big question is, will this be the final of this? Will this be the event that leads to the final crash? Or will someone again, Qatar, China, Russia, whoever, come once more to Erdogan's uh, rescue. I suspect Erdogan thinks they will because it's always happened up to now. I wonder whether this time that will really happen. What do they get when they come to uh, Turkey's rescue? Qatar and China and Russia well, that's, and, uh, well, and these countries. What, what do they get in exchange for it? Well, that's a very good question because I don't see that they get anything in exchange for it. I mean, I think I think in terms of Qatar, it had a, um, a standoff with Saudi Arabia. The Saudis MBS uh, uh, threatened Qatar with invasion at one point and placed it under blockade. 
and it really did look for a time as if Qatar was threatened by Saudi Arabia and so it turned to Turkey and Turkey sent troops to Qatar and that brief that stabilized the situation with Qatar and gave it a certain degree of security with respect to Saudi Arabia but Saudi Arabia and Qatar have now had a reconciliation so they don't need Turkey in the same way that they did before um, China thought that it could win Erdogan round and you know draw him into the you know Belt and Road programs and all of that but I think they've concluded increasingly that he's simply an unreliable partner and of course the Russians there's some Russians who still fantasize that um, you know Turkey can be pulled away from NATO that it can somehow be you know, drawn into the Eurasian system. We've talked about this many times. There's still this illusion on the part of some people in Moscow that this is possible. I think that they're looking at the figures. The finance people and the finance ministry must be looking at the figures and they must be telling anybody in Moscow, in the Kremlin, who still thinks in that way, that Turkey's economy is unsustainable and Russia simply doesn't have the resources to bail it out. So I think that overall, uh, no one is getting anything from supporting Erdogan. He is a mild ir irritant to the United States, but he's not anybody's real ally. And I think they must all be gradually coming round to the view that really supporting him and Turkey in this way is simply not practical. The question is whether, as I said, this time Erdogan has finally and fully run out of road. I suspect possibly yes, but we shall see. How does um, how does the United States? Well, no, that's that's probably not the question I want to ask. How does the United? Maybe under a different administration. How does how does Erdogan see his options? given the fact that you said Qatar, China, maybe Russia, maybe off the table and bailing him out uh, again. Yeah. How does Erdogan see the United States? Does, does he see the United States as perhaps his ultimate backup plan that he can get some rapprochement with the United States? If all else fails, they'll be the last, the, the lender of last resorts and, uh, and bail him out once again from his, uh, from his economic troubles. And how does, but how does he view that given what he saw from the Biden White House this last week and from what yep. he saw with Blinken dealing with China with all these guys? Does Erdogan say, oh crap, I have to find a way to, to deal with the United States so that they can bail me out if all else fails? Or, does, or is he saying, this is great, I've got probably the most inept, the most incompetent White House administration you could possibly dream of so I could help basically roll all over them and get whatever I want. I mean, how, how, is, he, how is he looking at this? Because he's going to look to survive. I, 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 I mean, Erdogan at know. the end of the day is a survivor. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, he, and I think that some kind of an approach to the US is quite likely, actually. Um, the problem is that it's become quite clear that there are some people in the Biden team, we can't really talk about a united Biden team, but there are some people in the Biden team who really don't like Erdogan, not because, you know, they have any great strategy, but because Erdogan is not keen on the Kurds and they're really committed to the Kurds and there's all that going on. So there, there is there is that problem with Erdogan and the uh, administration. But Erdogan has shown that has given indications since Biden came in that he would be prepared to patch things up with the US. He sort of hinted that he'd try and find a solution to the S-400 issue. He's indicated that he might try and work with the US on some of the Syrian issues too. So I, I, I can see that that might be ultimately where he would, if, if, if pushed, might feel that he has to go. But I'm not really sure that the US is in any real condition at the moment to help him out because well, we're going to see an economic boom in the United States over the next few weeks because of the massive stimulus package that the US is now um, going to see. But ultimately, I think the position there is somewhat unstable 
in terms of the political situation. And I don't think there would ever be a united administration deciding, making a decision to actually come to Erdogan's rescue. So that might not work. I suspect that the other place he might turn to, oddly enough, is the European Union. And of course, he has always that thing over the Germans. He can say to them, well, look, if Turkey goes, you're going to get 10 million refugees pouring into Europe. <laughs> and, you know, we've already got one million refugees in Turkey already, and they're all waiting to go. And please give us lots of money, because if you don't, that's what's going to happen to you. So I, 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 I suspect that will be Erdogan's last card. That's going to be the card he's really going to play. He may try something with the United States, but it'll be Europe, Berlin specifically, that he will be look, looking to most for help from. And Merkel will, will give him the money. This, Merkel, this will, no Merkel, Merkel, Merkel will give him the money, though it won't be popular in Germany. I mean, there'll be a lot of people in Germany who will be unhappy. But I think after the events of 2015, no German leader, whoever he or she is, Merkel or anyone else, will want to go through that again. And that's, uh, that's probably where, as I said, Erdogan will turn to. Whether it will be enough is another matter. I mean, Turkey's a big country. It's a big economy. The debts are enormous. And of course, there's no possible guarantee that if you give Erdogan lots of money, he's going to change anything. He's going to go back. If you give him you know, the money, if you tide him over this problem, well, he'll go on cutting interest rates, getting ever deeper into debt, pursuing ever more aggressive foreign policies in Syria and Iraq, in the Eastern Mediterranean, wherever, because that's the kind of thing that Erdogan does. Yeah, if he gets into conflict, that's going to be the end of him, I think. That, that's when he'll bring everything down. But what, do you have any sense of, uh, of what, what things are like inside of, of Turkey as far as uh, the sentiment, protests, or any type of, of, of anxiety that, that you're reading about inside of Turkey? Because we did a video on Lebanon, for example. Obviously, yeah. Lebanon is, yeah. is much more progressed in its crisis. But we're seeing protests on a daily basis there, and I mean, it's 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 obvious that the country's at at the brink of collapse. Yes. Um, internally, is is Erdogan still keeping things together? I know he has a large base of support, especially in rural regions, but I get the sense um, that you know, in the big cities, he think that his support is starting to uh, to wane significantly. Absolutely. I think that's exactly what's happening. I think he still has a critical mass of support in, you know, in the countryside, in small towns, in those sort of places. But in the cities, it support is draining away because what his policies are doing, the these policies of, well, basically inflation and conceivably hyperinflation is they are destroying the livelihoods of Turkey's middle class. If you have hyperinflation, it's the kind of businesses that these people uh, uh, try to create and work in that are going to suffer most. And of course, it is the savings these people have that will be that, that are melting away. So he's lost support in Istanbul. He's probably lost support in Ankara also. It, it seems to me that before very long, the cities are going to turn completely against him. The problem is Erdogan has never shown any desire or indication that he's prepared to back off or retreat or compromise or change anything. And if he starts to perceive an internal challenge of that nature, there is no knowing where he can go. I mean, he might escalate even more. He might start wars. He might crank up internal repression, which, to be very clear, is already quite substantial in Turkey. So, you know, we mustn't assume that he will go away quietly and as support drains away in the cities, which I, I, I can't see how it will fail to do. I mean, it, as you rightly said, it has already done to a very great extent. Um, I, I think 
that the situation in Turkey will gradually become more volatile and more unstable, which will, of course, deter foreign investors even more, make, make people even less willing to lend to Turkey, make the Chinese and the Qataris even more wary about supporting um, uh, Erdogan, and might even make a couple of people in Moscow uh, uh, pause and think. So there we are. I mean, it's not a good outlook. It's been rec a recurring crisis with the lira, but it is ultimately, we've got to always understand, one crisis, which is a direct product of Erdogan's very unconventional, shall we say, way of running the Turkish economy, which in the end is going to fail. It has got to. All right. Uh, seems like every country is heading down that direction, but uh, right now it's well. I, 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 I have to say, well, quick, quickly say quickly something. I mean, obviously, I don't want to make push these comparisons and parallels too far. But you know, about Erdogan pursuing growth at all costs. Well, is that so very different from what the Biden people are doing in the United States? They're chalking up six and a half percent GDP growth this year. And they're doing that by writing lots and lots and lots of hot checks, because that's what they're doing. And isn't that, how how does that differ in fundamentals from what Erdogan has been up to? Now, U.S. very different country from Turkey. It's got depths of resources that Turkey can't even imagine. But in the end, as Margaret Thatcher what used to say, what cannot what is unsustainable cannot in the end be sustained. Maybe, maybe if you look at what happens in Turkey, perhaps some people might draw some lessons from it. Though I doubt it, actually. Right. Yeah, I doubt it. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, Chris, thank you very much. Guys, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you're still subscribed to this channel. Um, check your uh, notifications as well. Make sure you're still getting notifications from this channel. Share this video, hit that like. It takes 1.5 seconds to hit that like. It is absolutely free. Go to the Durad shop, pick up some merchandise, maybe a long sleeve, maybe a sweatshirt like what Alex has. I believe that one is with the flag of Scotland. My magic mug with the it flag certainly of is. Mexico. Magic mugs increase and your Britain. geopolitical IQ by thousands and thousands of points. Absolutely. Absolutely. And look us up on our other platforms, BitChute, Library, Rumble, especially Odyssey. Check us out on our Discord server. And we look forward to you joining us on our next broadcast. And have a wonderful day. Until then. Yeah. And go to Alexandra's channel, guys. Subscribe. Go to my channel. Subscribe. And go to the Call-In Show channel. We'll, we'll get some more Call-In videos up this week as well from the Call-In Show. So make sure you subscribe to that channel as well. All the links are in the description box down below. Take care.